Hey, what's up, Shoe Tyler's Eric from the American Street Photography Blog. I am going to give you guys some tips on how to shoot street photography on a film Leica. And as promotion, buy film notes. Buy books, not gear, and also buy a film Leica camera because they'll make you happy for the rest of your life and you'll be awesome. Just kidding. So go to Eric Kim Blog, go to the store, buy a film notes. Anyway, okay. So. First things first, why buy a film Leica? Unfortunately, I'm sorry guys, by buying a film Leica, it's not going to make your penis size bigger, it's not going to make you a better photographer, but you're going to make really nice photos with the Leica and shooting selfies with your cappuccino. The biggest reason why you should or might buy a film Leica is it is the ultimate form of simplicity and minimalism. So I personally got this camera used from my friend Bellamy Hunt who runs japancamerahunter.com. I think the film like MP retails brand new for 5000. He got me a really nice copy from uh, a used copy in Japan that was only $3500. Uh, this lens I got from my friend Todd. I think I also got this lens used and you could get a 35 millimeter f2 Summicron Leica lens. I think you get it used for about maybe like two thousand bucks. So obviously very expensive stuff, but to me it's a better investment to buy one of these, in theory own it for the rest of your life, than upgrade your whatever cameras every five years or so. So when you want to shoot street photography on a film Leica, generally what I recommend, and this is just assuming you're shooting ISO uh, 400 film. So the first thing you want to do is, I recommend, keep it at f8. The reason why you want to shoot at f8 is that f8 is a good distance for shooting street photography because you allow yourself to have a fast enough shutter speed, but at the same time you have a lot of depth. The biggest mistake many of us make in street photography is that we try to shoot everything wide open at f2. If you want to make better images, keep it at f8. So f8 and be there. And the only thing you have to change is actually the, the shutter speed. So some sample example settings if you're shooting the street. On a bright sunny day, ISO 400 film, keep it f8 down per second, right? If you're shooting indoors, you want to shoot wide open, so like f2 or 2.8, whatever your camera has. And what I'd, I'd actually recommend is shoot it at about, if you're shooting indoors, it's always better to overexpose and underexpose, either 15th of a second or 30th of a second, depending on how dark it is. Assuming once again you're shooting during the day. So if you're shooting uh, your subjects in the shade, generally 60th of a second is good or 125th of a second. And if you're photographing during sunrise or sunset, aka golden hour, usually 250th of a second is good. Obviously these are not perfect settings, but they, they work for me. And when it comes to shooting with a film like it, and obviously this tips apply to any camera or film camera or whatever, the reason why I like this lens is that it has this focusing tab here. So the benefit of the focusing tab is even if I close my eyes by feel, I know how to focus it. So usually ergonomically speaking, take your finger, put it under here. Don't do that. This little knuckle thing people do. It's, it's kind of dumb. Keep it like this. And you can see if this is dead center on the top, it's pre-focused to about roughly 1.2 meters, which is also about two arm lengths away. So when you're shooting street, keep it pre-focused to 1.2 meters in the center, right? 45 degrees to the left is close distance. 45 degrees to the right is far distance. And if you actually guys read this, um, these little marks on the camera, you can see if you shoot at f16, everything from, let's say you're pre-focused to uh, 1.2 meters, right? If you're shooting f16, everything from about 2 meters all the way up to, um, let's say, 1 meter is going to be in focus if you're shooting at f16. If you're shooting at f8, you can see this little line here is everything from about mm, 2.5 meters up until 1.5 meters is going to be in focus. So obviously the more, the smaller your f-stop or, uh, sorry, if you shoot at f16, you'll have more depth of field than shooting at f8. But f8 is a good general default uh, location. Also, in terms of lenses, to be frank, if I could do this all over again, I would actually not buy this lens. I would buy 
the Leica 35 millimeter f 2.4 sumo rit because I think in street you don't ever have to shoot at f2 or wide open and also the, the the lens is smaller it's lighter and it's cooler the reason why I actually bought the black paint film Leica MP is that the more you use it there's something called brassing so you use it and then the edges become brass and to me aesthetically this is beautiful is uh, shows a nice wear and patina so you can see the bottom of my like MP I quite like all the scratches and to me it tells a better story when I bought this camera it was actually pretty much brand new minty and I kind of like all the wear marks I've been able to put into the camera to me it's like a badge of honor and also you can see obviously I, I think I might have put about at least a thousand rolls of film through this and uh, the only cameras I currently own are the film like MP as well as the Rico, digital Rico GR version 2. I think it's the best combination for me. And when you're shooting with a street photography, um, sorry, I'm gonna go back to street photography. So if you're shooting street, if you see a good scene, do not just take one or two photos, work the scene. Try to take at least five, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 photos, whatever. Obviously you can't shoot 50 photos because you have to rewind. So you're more or less limited to 36 shots. The biggest tip that I have when it comes to shooting street photography and film is be more picky about in terms of what you decide to photograph, but once you see a good scene, shoot a whole roll of film on it. So for example, some of my favorite photos, I might have walked around the streets for about eight hours and find nothing interesting, but once I find a good scene, I'll shoot a whole roll of film on it. And don't be too afraid to burn through your film because I think it's better to waste 20 bucks and capture the one most amazing photo of your life than to be stingy with your film. Um, other things with uh, shooting with a Leica, any other tips I'd probably give you guys is, don't start off by buying a film Leica. Start off by just buying a point and shoot film, uh, film camera using the used, I'm sure you have a used film SLR camera if somebody's staying at home. My good recommendations for other film cameras is, um, these are based on my friend Bellamy Hunt, aka JapanCameraHunter.com. The Nikon FM2, great camera. Uh, in terms of point shoot cameras, the Contax T2 is probably the best bang for the buck. I personally really like the Contax T3 camera, it's a little point shoot, it's a little bit smaller, but the aperture blades in the front that open and close, they often get stuck, and so I've had to get mine repaired twice, so I don't recommend that camera anymore. Um, don't buy film Ricoh GRs anymore because they're all going to break and it's kind of a waste of money. If you have fuck you money, which means you're very rich and money doesn't really matter much to you, I would actually recommend getting, get a second hand used film MP, even if you're rich. Because honestly, once again, the coolest thing about owning a film Leica is having these wear marks and it's kind of like having battle scars and I think that's just um, way cooler. And let's see, what are some other notes, some other tips I have from film notes. So, in the back of film notes is actually quite interesting because you can have different film assignments and you could track your progress, whether you like the shots or not. And there's also lots of really practical assignments. But I'm gonna skip to the back to see some other practical film uh, photography assignments that you guys could do. Because I think when, when it comes to shooting film, the hardest thing is to just kind of uh, stay inspired. So, actually no, sorry. I'll skip ahead. So look at this sheet here on the back, quick tips. So for film, it's always better to underexpose and overexpose because film, you can't really blow out the highlights. When you're shooting indoors, shoot wide open. Very common sense. And also shoot a scene 25% more than you think you should. So even if you're shooting film, you see an interesting person or a scene, let's say you end up taking five photos of the scene, push yourself and shoot 25% more. So shoot two more images. Uh, other composition tips, work the scene, look for hand gestures, get a clean background, look at the edges of the frame. And when in doubt, take three steps closer. Often the biggest mistake we make in our photography is that the background's too messy. So learn more. Pick up first edition of Film Notes. Thanks to Cindy and the crew for making it. And also photograph this next to your cappuccino and do a hashtag Film Notes because that's what life's about. All right, peace out guys.